It's bound to be where you forget something and irrelevant of how smart you are. It doesn't even matter how if you're the person with the most IQ. You are bound to forget things. It's only natural and it's only normal. But the fact that if it's normal, that doesn't mean that nothing should be done about it. There are key things that you can actually make sure that you retain yourself. And something I call brain boosters. These are the other things where you can actually help you have better memory, retain yourself things a bit longer and have the longer lasting memory so that all of these type of things, especially the important things that you want to, can retain in the long term memory where everything is stored and it can easily be collected as well. Hi everyone, I'm Aidan Khan, a medical student studying in England. And in this video, I'll give you five tips that if you follow, will be able to boost your brain to be able to have better memory and if you follow any of them you will be able to have a better retain of information through it now these five things i had to talk about there might be a couple of them in itself that deserve its own video but for the sake of this video and for the purposes of what i want to explain i'll talk to them briefly about and how they more so are focused upon retaining information and boosting your memory starting off with brain is a muscle your brain and any type of muscle you have to exercise so you have to train it so you can become better it can become more efficient you can grow and further down the line you can are able to actually do a lot better a lot more things with it a lot better things with it where you weren't able to if you want actually exercising it if you want training it this can be any intellectual exercise this could be as things as sudoku or any other puzzles crosswords even and if you actually do them on a more so regular basis you are actually exercising your brain as a muscle training it so that on a regular basis you are utilizing it on more and more it's part of the reason why majority of the elderly people are more so encouraged to do this type of activity so they're working their brain they're utilizing their brain even if they're not really working themselves if they're not doing any of the activities that they used to before this simple activity allows them to keep their brain active making sure that the brain is alive brain is able to still utilize all of its features henceforth majority of the memory as well is still stored or any of the new information that you do retain is lasting in the long-term memory it doesn't even have to be paid based uh, puzzles it could even be any sort of puzzles such as escaping the maze let's say or any other forms of quizzes or even uh, online games that are more so puzzle oriented I'm also going to challenge your brain and be able to make you scratch your head for a bit to say okay how exactly do I go about with it these are also good it doesn't even have to be paper format if you're more so keen on using your phone and perhaps rather than idly scrolling through it utilize that into a game a virtual intellectual game where it's more so puzzle based and you're utilizing that same time which you would have used on social media let's say into training your brain into making sure that you retain information the next step is also making sure you're getting enough sleep now obviously the amount of sleep in itself that you get varies between person to person you can easily function or optimally function at eight hours of sleep which is the normal average anyways however some others may even function less than eight hours or even require more than eight hours everyone's body is different finding that optimal time where you never naturally wake up to and to the point where you don't wake up tired is something that you have to find out yourself. Perhaps if it's a day off from work you where you don't have to wake up early. Sleep at any time that you like. Let's say 12 o'clock. I say 12 o'clock because once you wake up and naturally yourself where you're not tired you're able to actually then recall okay how many hours of sleep did I actually get from it and be able to track down backwards easily. Through this then you're able to actually see that okay my body needs these many, this many hours of sleep to work function and always to use that as the target for any other work day where you actually have to wake up early that because my, I know that my body needs let's say eight hours of sleep I'm going to make sure that I sleep early enough so I get that eight hours on a regular basis because otherwise if you're sleep deprived you know your mind is not going to be active it's not going to be optimal and it's not performing at its optimal stage along with that it's also the quality of sleep that you can get making sure that you optimize not only the hours but the quality of sleep so that the eight hours that you do sleep for let's say all of those hours all of that minutes count and making sure that all of that a majority of that is deep sleep where you're able to have the brain rest be able to actually clean itself and detox itself from it this sleep science actually requires its own whole dedicated video which i'm bound to do in the near future as well but for the purposes of this and making sure that your brain generally is active these are the two main things that you need to actually focus on the length of sleep which you can easily test and also the quality of sleep and for that you can easily create the conditions are you making sure that there is no bright light especially half an hour or two hours one hour before you go to sleep so that your eyes or your brain naturally thinks that okay it's night time it's no longer daytime it's now good time to go to sleep and it's preparing your brain to actually easily lay down and close your eyes and rest sleep generally also is just good for stress anyways 
which is the other thing that I was explaining about. If you're stressed, if you're highly emotional at that stage in that current moment, obviously you're not going to function the best. And if you continue to stay stressed, if you continue to be emotional, like obviously that becomes the normal state of mind for you, where it just becomes the new norm. And then what the brain then thinks is, okay, intellectual things aren't the priority right now. It's more so emotional driven. It's more so the things that are making sure that our stress are focusing on the stress source is that's the main focus which shouldn't be the main case because generally what happens then is the intellectual high functioning areas of the brain which allows more so intellects are deep thinking is no longer the priority or is not being used anymore so the neurons going to those endings are being less and less used as a result of it it's always best to target your emotions this does not mean that you have to f straight away be nihilistic towards it and ignore your emotions no that's counterproductive what it means is that you need to acknowledge them see what it's actually causing all of those emotions especially the negative ones see what could be done about it i.e talk to someone communicate have some other activities such as meditation yoga or even journaling those these simple types of activities in itself not only actually lets your brain have a peace of mind for a brief period of time outside of sleep as well but it also gives you your brain to actually start thinking and start recalling and reflecting on the how the day went be that with communicating with your friends with your family how your day went what you're looking forward to i even through journaling as a written form method how your overall day was what was so good about it what was so not so good thing about it and what could have been reproved about it this self-reflection this idea about meditating you know generally speaking will always obviously be good now i'm not saying that this, this these are the only things that you can do this isn't more so advice at the same time obviously if you are not in the best mental state of mind always seek professional help at the same time that would be the best and foremost if you believe that you really need that support go for it however these things that i mentioned should also work alongside it rather than a substitute that one or the other have a go at them alongside seeking professional help if that is necessary the next thing is food the nutrition that you eat and the type of foods that you have as well these foods are mostly called the brain booster foods things like fatty fish such as omega-6 omega-3 you see a lot of mothers get omega omega-3 or omega-6 these type of fish essential fish oils to younger children because that boosts their brain that's what their brain actually needs if they have more supply of that they're able to actually grow a lot better through that nourishment that they're getting and outside of that that just having fresh food rather than processed food that's just generally better for you anyways it's better for your body it's better for your mind as well whatever you take in the better quality of that would be you're able to get better quality of work through that energy that's obtained through the nutrients that you obtained so it's generally for your best interest to be able to obtain that. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that it's easily accessible at the same time, but wherever you can, wherever possible, you can always opt in for that. Say, for example, if you're a sweet tooth like I have, and if you're really a chocolate fanatic, perhaps opt in for the dark chocolate instead of milky or white chocolate, because that's more so nutritionally beneficial for you, for your brain and for your body. It's things like that. If you always opt in for a coffee, obviously, a lot of, I'm going to... Uh, get a lot of slack from coffee enthusiasts. You can get the same effect from eating an apple as you would from a coffee, but minus the side effects that coffee brings, i.e. jitteriness or any withdrawal of not having caffeine. Apple does the same thing, but without any of the side effects. Obviously, if you really love your coffee and you can't live without it, i.e. the taste of it, the texture of the, or the overall idea about drinking something similar to coffee, then sure, go for it. But perhaps also try apple every now and then as well and see how that actually affects you. It would be most likely a better substitute yes but i'm not denying if the start of the day if coffee is the first thing that you look forward to and you can't function without it you shouldn't stop it at the same time but perhaps try to reduce it at a minimal amount that doesn't affect you this might sound kind of a surprise but tip number five i would say is being social it's connecting with people connecting with you know having communicating with people is one of the ways in which you can keep your brain active the overall idea it goes back to is making sure that your brain is active your brain is getting the enough nutrients and and it's getting enough rest, which is the overall arching ideas of all of the tips that I'm talking to you about. And part of it is being social. You're communicating with people, you're looking at people, you're judging their special facial expressions, you're being social with them. That requires all of the different functions of your brain, body language, your eye visual aid, your speaking skills 
and being able to think on the spot about what's happening, processing the information right there and then, and being able to actually then interpret the information and respond to it in a manner. Obviously, this does not mean that, oh, I'm speaking with you, I'm spending time with all of my friends all day. That automatically means that my memory is all immediately good as well. No, it also depends on the quality of people that you spend time with. Are you having intellectual discussions? Are you having thought-provoking discussions? That is actually going to intrigue you or make you think even afterwards, after the discussion happened because what that means is that your brain even after they have left even after you, you have stood up and had your lunch together without what the occasion was you're still thinking about the discussion that you guys had you're still thinking about what about if we think about it in this angle Ooh, that would be a good idea once we actually catch up together again we can talk about it through that it depends on the quality and the type of discussions you're having as well but generally just being social is a good way to start off with so having the company and the quality of the company that you have with also matters at the same time because it just it becomes easier to have those type of discussions those type of talks with people so have an, and try to go with that obviously this if you're a university student if you're an a-levels or gcse student while you're in the class always talk about this and even outside of class as well oh perhaps could you go through with this with me shall we talk about this topic that we went over I, it would be good if we actually talk about it through it so i can have a better understanding it will also be beneficial for them as well but perhaps they didn't understand it themselves and they are just too shy to talk about it and, and don't feel that they should actually talk about it to begin with by you approaching to them but maybe that would be a bit easier for them but saying that okay yes that would be a good idea i was thinking about it as well uh it would make, make it easier for saying okay uh can we also talk about this topic that we did yesterday it would also be a good idea for me to go over it with you it just opens up new discussions through it as well in the longer term and that already sets you to be able to speak in, in the next time as well so all right guys so that was the brief explanation of the tips that i would have gone through in terms of uh, the tips i would tell someone if they wanted to improve their memory and make their general brain active through it if there's any other tips that you would also recommend or if there's anything that you would like to start using yourself i are already using and would like to tell me about it drop them down in the comments below and i'll be more than happy to go through them and also perhaps respond to it as well when if when i get the chance to but in the meantime i'll see you in the next episode